Good morning. Welcome to another stream. I am going to be continuing building the uh, Python apps. So if you don't know, uh, this is Free Code Camp. And they have basically thousands of hours of coding tutorials and projects that you can build on here. And so they came out with the um, Python curriculum, I think about a year ago. So I'm finally getting around to building the Python apps here. Hey, Bassith and Chai, how are you? So this is the specific project that I will be working on today. And yeah, so basically it doesn't give much information. I haven't seen the Repolit yet, but it just says create a category class that can be used to, to create different budget categories. And I have no idea what that means. So I'm going to click on the full project description here. Okay, so now I, I clicked on the link again. And oh, let me turn down this music. Too loud. All right. Now it's spinning up my Repolit. This is kind of cool um, because most of the other projects, at least when I did the projects, which, you know, that was six years ago. But you have to do them on your own locally. But these with the Python projects, it gives you an online environment to be able to just start building right out of the box. Um, which is sometimes the hardest part is just starting and getting your local environment set up. So, um, okay, so complete the category class in budget.py. So here's my file, budget.py. It should be able to instantiate objects based on different budget categories. Okay, like food, clothing, and entertainment. When objects are created, they are passed in the name of the category. The class should have an instance variable called ledger that is a list. Um, okay. The class should also containing the following contain the following methods. So deposit, withdraw, get balance, transfer, check funds. Um, okay. When a budget object is printed, it should display a title with the line of 30 characters where the name of the category is centered in a line of I'm not sure what that means. Star characters? Of any number of characters? Oh, there's a line of stars. Okay. You print out an actual line of the this character. I get it. Good morning, Jason. How are you? Um, Alright. And so a list of items in the ledger. Each line should show the description and amount. The first 23 characters of the description should be displayed, then the amount. Okay, so I have to truncate the description. The amount should be right aligned, contain uh, two decimal places, and display maximum of seven characters. Okay, so here's the printout basically. So it has the category name in the first row with all the stars around it. So I have to format that. And then it has the name, I guess, of each, uh, yeah, item in the ledger and the amount. And then it displays the total. Hmm, this is interesting. About to start a meeting, then automate some server configuration. Sounds fun. Um, beside the category class, yes, I'm doing very well. And fortunately, my work is pretty flexible, so I can start earlier or later. So I can do fun stuff like this. Um, beside the category class, create a function outside of the class called create spend chart. Okay. That takes a list of categories as an argument. It should return a string. Okay, so this is version two. I don't need to get down to that yet. So basically how this is laid out is 
This is the file I'll be writing in, this budget.py file. I need to create this category class and this other function. I'll just go ahead and put pass there. So this is the create spend chart, but I'll do that later. And then, uh, let's see, where is it? Oh yeah, the test module. So these are the tests that are gonna be run. So, set up food test. Lift up food that deposit. Okay, so it gives me a deposit and ledger expected. Okay, and then it gets some of these tests have more and more steps as it goes on. All right, so these are um, projects on Free Code Camp. So I did two two of them already. Let me see. Yeah, there's the link. So this is project number three out of five for the Python curriculum. Um, the challenges for Python, I think they're all still video challenges. So uh, they weren't, I guess they weren't uh, interesting to live stream me watching a video. I don't know. I don't know if that would be interesting. Um, let's see, complete the category class in budget pi. All right, so I need a, a category, so I'm gonna have to do, is that right? Self, um, yeah, category. I need to instantiate this. Why is it invalid syntax? Oh, 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 wait, def, right? Yeah. There we go. That's why. We're watching a YouTube video. Oh, cool. Are you just learning Python now? Hey, Amy, thanks for the follow. Um, okay, so I need to do self.category equals category. Okay. Um... And then I am interested in, in the print. So I guess I could overwrite the default printing, although I'm not there yet. So, okay, so let me do, uh, let's do cat equals category. And then print cat dot wow well, but this is already category i shouldn't call this category inside of category let me call this name instead can i do yes i can do multi-select that's awesome i didn't realize i could do that in repl.it okay so yeah let me call it name name of category that's fine okay so category dot name and let me just run this to see if it's running correctly. So I'll do python budget.py. No. Uh, let's see. Equals category. Missing one. Oh, I'm not passing in a category name. That's why. I've been working in it for a few years. Okay. So just like me. I found that it's really useful to go back and do all these projects and stuff and remember things that I've forgotten or get better at the basics. Um, let's see. Okay, um, I'm gonna do that. All right, so that's not hard. Okay, so I have I need to make these methods. I should be able to instantiate objects 
based on different budget categories. Wait, I should I should look in the test file and see. Oh yeah, it just passes in the category. Okay. And also, it's kind of just something I've been trying to do is use double quotes in Python. So. Okay. So I need to create these methods. So I need deposit, withdraw, get balance, and transfer. Okay, deposit. And then uh, def withdraw. Okay. Um, get balance. Uh, oh yeah, transfer and check funds. Okay, transfer. Remember where you're transferring to. Another budget. Okay, so I guess you can transfer from one category to another. I'm not sure how that's going to work. When I first started reading this, I was like, oh, this is easy. I can do it in less than an hour, but now I'm thinking it's going to take a little longer. Okay, check funds. Self. Okay, so those are all the methods. And then I need some kind of print. Uh, when the budget category is printed, it should display. Let me look at the test, how it's printing. Um, Self.food.deposit. Okay, so it's setting up the food category. I don't know how it's actually printing. I thought maybe it was making a print method. Um, okay, so it's depositing, it's withdrawing, it's, okay, showing the actual versus expected. Um, versus expected. I guess I could get to this later. The expected is a dictionary with the amount and the description. So actual self.food.ledger. So I guess when I create the ledger method, I'm going to understand. Maybe that returns what's going to be printed. That's what it looks like. OK, um, that's good. This seems pretty straightforward. Now for, let me do deposit. So I need to create, okay, get balance method that returns the current balance of the budget category based on the deposits and withdrawals that have occurred. So here I need to do something like self.total. But, hmm, yeah, because I need access to it. But I could make this a private variable. I don't know if I actually need access to it from the outside, outside of these methods. Um, anyway, let me just do this and see what happens. So deposit, it should take some kind of an amount. Amount. Amount is two M's. Is this spell checking? No, it's one M, right? Why can't I remember how to spell? That doesn't look right. And this doesn't look right. Okay, that looks right. <laughs> Maybe. Um, let's see. So deposit will be self dot total 
plus equals amount. Now this should be, I think this is a float, right? With two, hey Underworld, how are you? Um, yeah, with two decimals. Maybe I'll get to that later. Can I do 0.0? .0? Um, maybe to make it a float there. And then I can always round to two decimals later. Um, okay, def withdraw. So this would be also an amount. And self dot total minus equals amount and then get balance I don't know is this just gonna print the amount print self dot total yeah I think um okay let me try this just so I know it's working Okay, I already know that's working. I have category. Um, okay, I'm instantiating category. And then here I can call all of the methods. So self.deposit and then 10 uh, cat dot withdraw five and then print no 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 this already prints the method already prints so i can do cat dot get balance and let's see that will be actually yeah okay so that would be um yeah, I don't have to pass anything into that one. So let me see what that is. 5.0, oh, yeah, so all of that's working. Um, but I think get balance, let me see. Get, where they're calling get balance, self.food.get balance is stored in actual. So I need to return the balance. I don't need to print it, I think. So, uh, let me see. Get from get balance, I need to, yeah, maybe just return self.total. There we go. Okay, so that seems okay. Maybe I should do a check to see if it's a number, but it doesn't talk about error handling in the description, so I guess I don't need to worry about that. Um, I'm confused about transfer though. A method that accepts an amount and another budget. Oh, ah, this is going to be difficult, I think. Um, no, wait, so I'll get the other budget category, which will be another instance and basically the method should add a withdrawal of the amount uh, in the description transfer to okay destination budget category the method should then accept wait where does it add this description to the method should then add a deposit to the other budget category. Okay, so you're de depositing from one and withdrawing from the first one, okay. Um, with the amount and the description transfer from, if there are not enough funds, nothing should be added to either ledgers. This method should return true if the transfer took place and false otherwise. Okay, so transfer I need to take in um, I guess instance 
and amount transfer an amount and another budget category well let me see how it's calling so let me search for transfer um, self dot okay so the entertainment category basically so I could transfer so the first um, argument has to be the amount and then the instance so uh, let's see oh yeah I just need to change this around instance okay so I need to transfer so the first thing I can do is do a check so if I guess the amount to transfer is greater than whatever is in self dot total then here I return false oh wait let me return it okay otherwise I need to return true um, yeah so now I need to so if it doesn't return false that means the amount is okay to transfer so let's see I need to first let me withdraw from here so I can call my method self dot with draw and just pass through the amount and then I guess I can call instance dot deposit and then amount uh, yeah okay and then I don't know what this like if it says to add should add a withdrawal with the amount and description I guess I have to keep a ledger oh yeah it says something about a ledger I don't know where that comes in though okay well let me just start with this anyway and try a transfer okay so let me deposit a hundred in here let me make two categories um, let me call the first one, I'll just call it food. And entertainment. Plus category. Entertainment. Okay, so I have two categories now. And in food, I'm going to deposit 100 of whatever um, and then I'm gonna do food dot transfer okay food dot transfer let me transfer 25 and then I'll print out food dot get balance let me see if I can oh sweet this has a lot of the Standard hotkeys built in. I need to try using Vim on this. Um, I know it has Vim functionality, but I haven't tried it yet. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. Okay, so I should be able to see. I expect food dot get balance that should be seventy five. Entertainment dot get balance that should be twenty five because I've transferred it from food. Oh, I need to pass in my. Uh, entertainment instance okay there now this should work let me try it in the console sweet okay so for some reason I thought that was hard until I started coding it and then it was not hard I'm not sure why I thought that okay um, that is 
quite a bit of this. There's also, so what's the difference between get balance and check funds? It accepts an amount as an argument. It returns false if the amount, okay, so this is just a Boolean. This method should be used by both the withdraw method. Oh yeah, I'm not checking in withdraw to see if I have money to withdraw. Um, it returns true or false. Okay, so I need to basically check this. So if amount, okay, so this has to be an amount and else return true. So if it doesn't return false, it will return true. Okay. Um, I guess, I don't know. I'll make a can transfer variable. Uh, thanks for the follow, numbfish. How are you? Let's see, can transfer equals self dot check funds and pass in the amount. Okay. Um, well, how do I, basically I want to prevent writing extra lines of code, but I need the Boolean. I need to check here, check if I have enough funds. And then basically, you know, if it can transfer, so if it's true, I can do all of this and then return um, can transfer. Oh wait, I will, I'll return it no matter what. But if it's true, I want to do these things. And if it's false, I just want it to return. Okay, so I think that will work. Um, I should put a space here. That's not in the if block. All right, so I rewrote that, and now I need to add it to check or uh, can withdraw basically. Um, but I don't need to return anything from here. So actually, all I need to do is if self dot check funds amount and then I'll withdraw it otherwise do I have to but the amount pass should be stored in the ledger as a negative number oh I need yeah I have to figure out what to do with the ledger if there are not enough funds nothing should be added to the ledger this method should return true if the withdrawal took place and false otherwise okay so I have to return something from there so uh, let me get that out of there oh actually what am I doing this is Python let me properly do snake case oh wait let me And there we go. Can transfer. I think that's it. Yeah. And so here I'll do can uh, withdraw equals. All right. So can withdraw equals self dot check funds of amount okay if can withdraw and then anyway regardless I'll return can withdraw okay so I think that will work let me see okay so it's all still working um, let me try to transfer wait, something that's more than I have. See what happens. Yeah, nothing transferred. Okay, so that's fine. Um, check funds, can withdraw. Yeah, 
So now I need to, I think I need to figure out the ledger. When the budget object is printed, it should display. Okay, so once I keep track of the ledger, it's just gonna basically, you know, go through all the ledger items. Uh, can you, data dev, can you explain line 12 through 16 and line 20 to 27? Okay, so line 12, if can withdraw, and then the transfer. Um, okay, so basically, I'm not sure which part to explain. So if I step through this, um, basically, I'm, you know, calling check funds and I, it returns a boolean. So it will return if the amount I'm trying to withdraw or transfer is greater than what I have, then my accumulated total, which I'm keeping track of, if it's greater, meaning I won't be able to, I don't have enough money to withdraw or transfer, so it will return false. Um, but if I have the money in my account, it will return true. So, of course, if it returns true, that means uh, this is true, so that evaluates to true, so then I can do, I can basically withdraw the money in my account. And that's the exact same thing I'm doing with transfer. And if you have a better way to write this, maybe a shorter way. Um, yeah, anyway, so basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm checking funds, if it's a true value, um, basically if can transfer, is true if I have the money then I'm gonna withdraw from this account I'm withdrawing from or basically like here I would if I do food transfer I'm withdrawing from food and basically depositing in entertainment um, so yeah um, did that help at all did that make sense okay so basically I need to keep track of a ledger. Where does it describe the ledger here? Yeah, ledger, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing with the ledger right now either. The class should have an instance variable called ledger that is a list. Oh, I missed that. So let me do self dot ledger then is an empty list a deposit method okay so I'm just pushing or appending things onto the ledger so here I'm doing self dot ledger dot append amount and description Should append. So, what is the description for a deposit then? Let me look in the tests. Um, hi, Olive Brad, how are you? So, let me look. Milk, what? Deposit. Uh, oh, description is deposit. Oh, wait, I pass in a description. Oh, I didn't get that when I read the instructions. Um, amount and description. Okay, well, yeah, for some reason I glossed over that. Okay, let me do description here and there. Now it will be a description. What is the IDE you're using? This is an online or a browser-based ID called Repolit. Um, if you go to a free code camp, let me see if I can copy this. Yeah. Um, free code camp does a one-click link where basically 
you just click on the link to start the challenge and it will set up this whole browser environment for you, which is really nice. Um, so amount description. Okay. And withdraw. Basically withdraw should have a description too. So I'll just put something on deposit. Um, yeah, so withdraw should have a description. Okay, so self amount description. So if it if the withdraw is successful, I should do self dot ledger, and then basically the same thing here. amount and description um, oh but the amount is a negative value so can I just put a negative um, let's see now let me try this oh let me go ahead and do the ledger for transfer too so and I need to add to the ledger on both instances for transfer so um, let's see transfer from yeah transfer from the method should add a deposit to the other budget category with the amount in the description okay so I need transfer to and transfer from um, destination. All right. Inside transfer here, I'm going to do self dot ledger dot append. No. Dot append. And grab this object. Go here, Get my transfer method, can do that. So self.ledger.append and then, oh yeah, it will be a, a negative amount. We'll draw the amount and description. Oh, I see, I don't have to do this, okay. So now, because I rewrote my methods here, so my deposit and withdraw, I take a description in and the withdraw will add the, or subtract or add the correct value, yeah. And make the ledger input for me. So now in can transfer, all I have to do is pass in, where's my cursor, there we go the ledger so I'll do an f string so I can pass in a variable um, I really don't like those box pop-ups so let's see I'm going to so for self I'm gonna say transfer transfer to and then as a variable uh, let's say instance dot name because I'm transferring to the instance that I'm passing in and now copy this this will be transfer from and now it's going to be self dot name okay so let me print the ledger here. So print ledger. No, what am I doing? Uh, print food.ledger and then entertainment.ledger. Okay, let me see what this is. Trace back. Okay. Uh, list object is not callable. self.ledger 
Oh yeah, where am I calling that? I shouldn't be calling that. Oh, here. I meant to do a pend. That's what I'm doing. There we go. Um, yeah, using the append list method. So let me clear my, clear my terminal. There we go. And now run it. Awesome. So I have the deposit and the ledger, and then I have the amount or the transfer. Now let me do some kind of a withdrawal. So food dot with draw uh, amount is 20 and description is beans. Okay. Oh, hey, raid dog. Oh, drunk time Lord. Sorry. That was the bot. <laughs> hey, drunk time Lord. How are you? Thanks for the raid. Um, I think it's my weird streaming times in the morning. I haven't been raided in a while. So good to see you. I'm working on, let me go ahead and post the link again. So this is basically like the title says a free code camp Python project. And I'm kind of, I think I'm close to being done. I basically had to create this category class for categories in a budget and then you know, make deposit, withdraw, get balance, transfer, all of those sorts of things. So I'm, t I'm testing it out right now. I'm doing, basically need to create instances of my category class and then call the methods like deposit, transfer, withdraw. And then I'm keeping track of a ledger here as well in a list and putting pushing on transactions and descriptions. So yeah, uh, entertainment, food. Yeah, let me try this again. Print it out. Amount negative 20 beans. Cool, this seems to all be working actually. So let me check the readme to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, when the budget object is printed, it should display. Okay, so there is something else I need to do. Uh, drunk time lord, I'm considering doing write-ups for Python sometime soon, maybe after my internship. I was considering applying for real Python if you know anything about them. The only thing I know about them is that they have lots of useful information that help me <laughs> when I'm coding Python, but I really, I don't think I know anybody who's involved with them. No. Um, a title line of 30 characters where the name of the character is centered. Okay, so basically I need to generate this string somehow. Ah. Uh. But I'm confused. The thing about this, I think this is the last thing that I need to do. Oh no, there's one more thing, actually. Um, I need to create this whole function. So I might not get to that this stream. So anyway, I need to create this. So let me see. Oh, cool. Become an instructor for real Python. Do they have... I guess they have classes. I'm going to have to look into that. Thank you. Let me know how that goes. If they, you know, interview you or whatever. Um, let's see, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, this one. So they're depositing, withdrawing, transferring. Okay. And then they're calling the string method on self.food. And wait. Okay, so if I stringify self.food, they're expecting this to be returned. So how do I get 
the string representation of an object. I mean, how do I code for that inside the class here? Um, is there... I guess it might be a dunder string method? Let me see. So... Oh! Uh, repr. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And... Pass in self. Okay. So here... What do I need? So the first thing is the category, and then all these stars. Let me just copy the stars. Or wait, let me count them so I can just multiply. Or I don't know, I'll just I'll just do this. It's not that long. Okay, so first line will be uh, let me call this S, I guess. And the first line will be this. And then in the middle, let's see, food, um, okay, self dot, yeah, self dot name, which will be the category name, which I'll put so that takes care of the first line. And then I need to loop through the ledger here. So let me do for item in ledger, or that's self.ledger. And then I need to append. Oh yeah, I need a new line here. So I need to do a new line. And now I need to concat more lines. So S, I guess plus equals another F string. Okay, this is basically I need to, this is just normal left aligned. And then I need to right align these. So I wonder, I should probably take the, self dot name exactly 40 um will that put the name in the center though let me see i'm not sure it will okay cool um oh I d this is okay. It has to be 40 characters. I didn't even see that. Oh, 30 characters. A title line of 30 characters where the name of the category is centered and the rest of them are stars. Oh, okay. So it's not a set amount of stars on either side, it's just 30 total characters. So if your category name is longer, there will be fewer stars. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I think on the first challenge, I used some formatters to write align text. Um, yeah, super helpful. Okay, so I can assume it's 30 characters. That's helpful. Um, and then now, just unmuted meeting is over. Cool. No, I'm... I'm almost done, I think, maybe. Um, so basically, I'm trying to print this out in the correct lines and everything. So it needs to be 30 characters. Uh, I thought you were here earlier. Oh no, Jason. At the beginning of the stream, I was talking to someone else about starting a meeting. So, sorry. So... Hey, welcome, Mindstorm. How are you? I guess there's been several people who are in meetings right now, which makes sense. Um, I'm on East Coast time, so it's, you know, kind of work day right now anyway. So let's see. Uh, Def Reaper. 
let's see initial deposit goes for use yeah let me try that so I guess the so the greater than or less than or right or left aligned and I guess it makes sense that the carrot would mean centered so that's pretty cool um, let's see yeah self dot name and then do the carrot of 30 all right and then I'm going to have to do, hmm, I think I'll have to do, so here, if I do basically item, so I have item dot description, and I need to truncate this too, so item dot description, and then I'll also have item dot amount and I need to write align amount so I think I will need to find out the length of the description um, unless can I justify like push things to either side with I'm sure I can somehow with Python formatting yeah if anyone knows how to do that let me know um, Let's see. Okay, so it'd basically be something like that, but not exactly. And then I need to do the total. So at the end, I would need to do s plus equals um, total, or yeah, some some kind of total amount here. So this would be total and then some kind of an amount. I'll leave it like that for now. Um, I could go ahead and have an, an accumulator variable here since I'm already looping. And then I could do um, here. So I could do ACC plus equals whatever the item dot amount is. Yeah. Z fill? Z fill fills with zeros though. So I don't actually want zeros. I mean I might have to use Z fill maybe for um, just for the amounts, you know, if the float doesn't have the two because the, the float might not have two characters there. So I'll use zfill for that. Um, so I guess I could use that on item.amount if it's less than. Um, oh, an override character. So a space. But um, item.description food.amount. 30 minus length item.description. Oh, that makes sense. And that will write a line. Yeah, so I don't need to touch item.description because that's already left aligned. And then if I do the greater than, yeah, because it points to the right. Python is just so intuitive in a lot of ways. Um, and then I can do, yeah, 30 minus the length and take the length of self.description. No, not self.description, item.description. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just try printing this out and see what happens. Okay. Oh yeah, I need to call the string. Okay, let me... Um, I guess I'll comment these out and then print string. Oh no, I'm already printing. Uh, oh, let me just return then. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. So yeah, let me return s. Return 
pass. Now I can call the string method. So yeah, the string method of, yeah, I guess just food of the instance. Okay, so dict object has no attribute description. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I'm uh, not treating it as a dictionary, basically. So let me fix this. So, oops, and there we go. Oh wait, this also needs to be in quotes. Oh, undo, undo, double quotes. And then the amount, I need that to be in quotes as well. Okay, I think that's right. Invalid syntax. Why is that invalid syntax? Oh! Um, no, wait, that should be right. Yeah, single quotes also works. I'm just trying to use double quotes. So, why is this invalid syntax? Let me see. It just says invalid syntax. There's no, no other helper there. Oh, it already has an opening double quote. Okay. Well, uh, let me uh, try to escape it. No, I'll just, yeah, let me use single quotes here. Never mind. There we go. All right, there we go. Thank you. Let me try this. Dict has no attribute amount. How does it not have an amount? Oh, here, I'm doing it again. All right, so let me try this. Yay, this works perfectly. Well, except they're not floats, but you know. And then the total isn't calculated. And then I also print food. Okay, so if you just print it instead of calling the string method or that yeah and then i also need to create the spend chart so i guess i need to finish um this printing method and then i need to do the spend chart Bye. you all are doing well i'm happy to be back from break and this is the app that i was actually working on two weeks ago so I'm going to post a link. It's a free code camp Python challenge. And oops. There we go. So um, it's a budget app, which is basically like working on uh, classes and inheritance and that kind of stuff. Um, but if you go into the free code camp challenge page that I just posted, you can see there's a link uh, to the challenge starter that you can just start working on in the browser. And so I have it here so far. This is what we were working on last stream. But from the README, so I got most of these things done. But then there's the output and all the printing. So I still need to work on this, um, printing out all the deposits and um, how, and basically all the transactions, uh, how money is coming into and out of the account. And then I need to figure out how to um, basically display all the percentages by category. And I have no idea how I'm going to do that yet. And I think that's it. So I should be able to finish that in not too much time. If I go off screen at any time for a minute, it's because I have allergies. So, uh, let's see. Okay, let's start with this one. And right now, so I have this class, which is the basic class they give you. Um, and then 
this uh, wrapper function, this is um, when I print out, I yeah, when I print out um, the values in this table, this function is handling that. So let me go to the console and just print, because I have a couple print statements that I just coded at the bottom of this file here. So let me run this with Python and then, um, yeah, this is the file budget.py and joint entertainment. Okay, so it prints out pretty, pretty nicely. I think that's actually okay. Um, let me see if I use a float here real quick. Transfer to entertainment. Yeah, I wonder if I need to put more spacing in between this. And also um, for, because the, this is money, I think that I'll need to add the extra zero on the end. But I guess I can run the tests and see. So they give you all these tests in the test module. So if I click run, that's already set up to run the test module here. So clothing.withdraw is missing one required positional argument description. Oh, okay. I thought that So, I thought that this was re like all the tests would have description, but I guess not. Let me look at the tests. And every time they call withdraw. Yeah, so it's here it's passing in the description. It withdraws 4567 and passes in the description of what what the money's being withdrawn for. Oh. This is testing withdraw with no description. So it's basically um, good withdraw, self.food.withdraw, expected withdraw method with no description to create a blank description. Oh, okay. Well, I have to change how I wrote these functions then. So, let's see. description. So I guess I can just do args and let me check here. So if args, is this the best way to do this? Let's see. Um, so if anything else is passed in, I'll get it in this args list and then I can say description equals I could probably put this on one line um, let's see if args description would equal yeah just um, an empty string and then else yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on one line okay so description equals um, well, empty string, no, equals args, hmm, but now it's going to error though, yeah, args zero, well, I don't know, maybe it won't, um, I'm not sure if it throws an error because it will check arg zero and if args doesn't exist but let's try it so if args 
else empty string and that will set description okay let me try that and see if it works um actually i need to run from here so let me run here okay that worked Sweet. I only failed two out of 11 tests. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, create spending chart. So that's what I have to do in this function at the bottom here is uh, create the spending chart and, oops. That is this one. So I basically need to have the categories at the bottom here and print out percentages here. It's up to 100%. Ah, oh, this is hard. <laughs> okay. So, um, unit tests. All right. Percentage spent by category. So anyway, I need to build up a, a print string. So I can start with percentage spent by category on the first line and then just do a new line. Hey filthy casual, how are you? Um yeah. Something like that. Let me look at my ripper function. So yeah, I don't need to put anything specific in there. Um, I don't need to right align anything. So that should be good. And then I can just keep building the string to make this kind of table. All right, I have the first line. Then I need to kind of print out these like um, the number or the percentages from 100 decrement by 10 and have a pipe next to it. So I don't know, should I just do a range? Um, so I think I can do, let's see. Um, for n in range, um, so it would be 100 to 0, and then can I decrement by negative 10? Let's see if that works. Let me just print out the numbers. Um, so print, yeah, print n, and let me call this function. So let me comment the other print statements out, and then just call the function at the bottom here. So I guess I don't have to print because I'm already printing. So let me, yeah, I'll just put an empty list for categories. So, let me see, create spend chart, um, I'm not doing anything with S, let me try running this. So, Python, um, budget. Okay. Yeah, that works. Um, I guess I should put negative one here because it's not inclusive. So, yeah, that'll print it down to zero. Okay. So I have those printing out. I guess I could do an F string here and print out N and then space and pipe. Is there a space here? 
Actually, there's no space. Okay. So it's just the number and then a pipe symbol. Oh, let me close the F string. Okay. So I'll basically need to build this onto the string I already have though. So I'm going to have to do this S plus equals N. And then for right now, I can just put a new line for each row. So let me, let me print S here and just test what it is so far. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, it looks exactly right. Um, oh, I see, okay. I thought it looked weird. So actually these are aligned, the pipe symbols are aligned all the way down. So I do need to, I guess, right align these. Um, based off of the length, like a hundred, well, it will always be like, these will always have padding left of one and zero will always have padding left of two. Cause it's only one character. So let me, yeah, let me try this. Um, I think so I'm using the string manipulation inside the F string here. So this is actually right aligning. Um, this symbol is being used to right align things. So uh, let's see, I feel like I need a nest, nested brackets in here. Because if I'm gonna right align, then this has to be inside. Yeah, so let me um, let me do this and then the pipe symbol and I already know how many characters it is. So I think I can just do four because it's never going to be a different number of characters. The longest one, a hundred will always be four characters with the pipe. Okay. So let me, um, yeah, so I think that will work, but I think this needs to be, um, does this need to be in a nested F string? I think I need to put F there. Let me just see if this runs. Yeah, it doesn't run. Okay. So I need to put another nested F string in here. Hmm. Yeah, invalid syntax. Um, I wonder if I can put single quotes? Let's see if that works. Uh, it's still saying it's invalid. Um, oh, because it's looking for a variable here. That's why. I thought I could nest F strings. Maybe I just don't remember how to do it here. Um, or maybe, no, no, no. I can do this, I think. single quotes. Can I do that? Let's see. Let me clear this again. No. Because this is still parsing it in here. What if I did a plus sign? Because then I'm just appending. Oh no, this is a number, so I might have to stringify that in order to add it. 
Okay. Let's see. Does anyone have any ideas? Okay. Well, that worked anyway. So, um, all right. So these are all lined up correctly. Now I just need to add, where is it? Oh, in the markdown. I need to add these based off the percentages. So I basically need to, I'll need the total and then I'll need the percentage from each category and then I can fill them in with these O's. So how do I, um, so it's passing in categories, but that has to be, that has to be the ledger, right? Because I need to know the total from each category. Let me see what the test does. Um, here it is. This is the test. One second. Sorry, my allergies are acting up. All right, so I have, okay, this test, and then create spend chart. Oh, so it's passing in the instance dot and then dot category name. Okay, as a list, all the categories on the instance. Interesting. Okay. So basically, let's see what I have here. I have food, entertainment, um, yeah, so I guess I pass in a list of the categories. So like here I would do food and hey junk time lord, how are you? All right. So yeah. This is well, it's just the Python projects. So I'm about halfway through. So I still have a bunch more to do. It's probably like four more streams or something. All right. So food and entertainment. Um, yeah, so I'm passing in these categories as a list when I call the function. And let me just... Yeah, let me print out categories here. Print categories. And just see what I'm doing. Oh, you're doing a presentation at PyCon. That's amazing. What are you going to do? Or what's your topic? Let's see. Total. Okay. So these are just the print statements from that wrapper function. It's called path to Pythonic. Nice. I think I'm gonna pull it up actually. Is this your first time giving a PyCon talk? I mean, I've never given a PyCon talk. Hmm. 
Nice. Oh, that's your actual presentation. Cool. All right, well, I'm not going to pull it up now in case it crashes my browser. But yeah, I'm de I'll definitely try to attend your talk. Cool. Um, so what was I doing? I lost track of what I was doing. Oh yeah, I need to find out the category and percentages. So basically, when I pass in food and entertainment, I should get... Let's see. Um, these are instances of category. So I should be able to, well, I can get balance, self.total, um, can withdraw. So how do I get the total? I guess I have access to the ledger then for each category. And that's how I'm going to have to figure out the total. So I think I can do, so let's just take the first category, which I'm passing in, which is food. And then I think I can do ledger. Let's see, see what that does. Oh, string has no attribute ledger. Okay. Um, so if I'm, this is an instance here. I deposit, transfer. Um, so here. Oh, this is, I'm doing the string. What I meant to do is categories. That's why. Cool. Yeah, so. Um, the amounts so I can I can total the amounts I guess that's what I should do for each category is okay so I need the total for each category and then or I guess just the total spent so let me just write this. So I need to figure out the total of withdrawals. I guess that's how I spell it. Um, so I need to find out the total of every withdrawal that I've made for each category. So I need to loop through the categories. So I'll have to do for cat in category and then I also need a running total um, so I need something like the absolute total and then the, just the category total and then from those, I can figure out the percentage. So, um, so if I'm looping through, this has to be a nested loop because I need to loop through the categories, but then I need to loop through the transactions in each category. Or I guess, yeah, because the ledger, I'll just append the amount wait for withdraw the amount and description um did i spend the most money yeah because this is just the spending so the negative numbers don't matter but i guess i can use that to check though Oh, pass here. So 
if the number is less than zero, I know it's a withdrawal, and those are the only numbers that I want. And I can always fix this later. So for item, because category should be a list, I think. Um, let's see. For item in category, let me pass this to. Okay, let me print this out again. Oh, for cat in categories. That's right. Okay. Python budget categories not iterable. Oh, I think I need to do dot ledger. Yeah. That should be iterable. Yeah, okay. And then I need to do the amount. So if, does anyone else get what I'm doing? Okay, so now I need to check the item because each item is um, basically this dictionary. So I can check if the item amount is less than zero, it must have been a withdrawal. And if it was, then I want to increment the total and also uh, ledger is just a list that I'm appending. So in this function here, when I'm creating the category or the budget for the category, then uh, let's see, I'm appending to that ledger. So I append objects to the ledger every time I deposit or withdraw money. Um, so in this function down here, I'm basically, and you can see in the tests how this works out, but I'm basically passing in all those categories that are instances of that class. Um, and then I, each category has a ledger attached to it. So I'm using that ledger to loop through and get all of, all of the totals. So let's see if, okay, so if the amount, and I'm gonna have to reuse this a couple times, so. Let me just store it in a variable. So amount equals that. And now total plus equals amount. And then, so this is the grand total that I need to calculate the percentage, but I also need the category total. So, I'll have to make a new variable inside the loop that will be the category total. And then here I'll also need to do the category. And I guess maybe I don't, I don't know. Let me just finish it and see what happens. Um, so the category total, and this also needs the amount on it. And then I should build a new dictionary maybe, but then I, I don't know if I need to get the total because I'll have all the totals in the dictionary, but I can, let me just say cats, which will be a list. And all I want in this list is basically, or it should be an object, I guess. <clears throat> Uh, a dictionary. Um, the keys can be the names of the category and then the values would be with the withdraw to totals. Um, so this is cat total is the cat the total for the category and the total is the total of all categories basically. 
so okay so if it's a withdrawal then and I guess I could eh, I think that's fine and then what do I do once I find out the total um, I don't need pass there anymore let's see Yeah, total amount, total. Uh, so once I find out the total, oh yeah, I need to use this. So I guess I can put key value pairs. So for category, so I wanna do it down here. And then cat cats and I need the name of the category where do I find out the name I guess I can just use cat I think I have yeah the name okay so I can use cat dot name equals the category total so let me just try printing that. Print cats. See what happens. Okay. And Python budget. Oops. Okay, this is good. Um, I do want the absolute values I guess at some point I don't know if I'm gonna do that before or after I can do it here so I could just take the absolute value here then I have to do it for total too um, total then I'll be subtracting so I can do it for total later um, I might not even have to do the total. I could just do that inline later. That adds another loop, I think. Okay, so now that I have the category totals, I feel like I need some caffeine or something. Okay, I have the categories, the category totals, I need to plug them into this loop, which is my string. Oops. So, um, I need to, I guess, figure out the percentages don't have the percentages yet which is I don't know should I loop through the categories again it seems like a waste but I also can't do it inside this loop here and I do have the total amount so what I should do here actually is total equals absolute value of total and then so all my totals should be correct should I store it in the cat object I already have it available here and it's available anywhere I want it I don't need it inside this this loop here um, and then I'll have to remove it when I'm because I'm going to be looping through the cat um, dictionary later. So I guess I'm just going to create another loop because why not? And I need to, I guess, figure out the percentages. So I would have to do again for cat in, this time in cats. 
Um, why am I drawing a blank here? So I basically need the index and the, which would be value in, let me see. Is it, can I do that? Let me print this and see. Okay. Yeah. No, what, what's the Python keyword? I can't even remember right now for some reason. Enumer, enumerate, right? Enumerate. Is that it? I guess I could use the helper. Enumerate. Iterable returns. Yeah. Okay, that should work. Let me see if that works. Yes, okay. Um, zero food, one entertainment. Yeah, because these are just the indexes and the values. Um, but I thought... I thought, though, that... Well, I guess... So here, if I did cats value, that would give me... Yeah, so I have to put it back in here. That's fine. Then I actually don't need the index here. I don't need the index, right? Yeah, I don't. Okay. So I guess I don't need enumerate at all. So let's see. Let me make sure that works. Okay. Yeah, that works just fine. So I have, let me just call it key because it's the key that I'm getting there. So, print cat's key. All right, and now I need to, I guess I could replace the value with the percentage. So total, yeah, is a hundred percent. So if I get the percentage and then I need to round somehow to an even 10, um, I feel like I'm getting lost in my thoughts right now. So for key and cat, so I need to divide basically cause I'll get this value here and Actually, this this isn't the best way. I want to get the key value here. How do I do that? I know there's a way to do that in Python, but I'm drawing a blank right now. So Python unpack object key value in loop. Okay, object dot items. All right. There. Let's try that. Let me print out the key value one more time. Make sure I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. All right, so now I need to figure out the percentages, and that's really what I want here. So I can, let's see, I'll take the value divided by the total, and then 
times that by 100, right? To get the percentage. Is that correct? Um, okay. I think that's correct. And I'm actually... Now I don't need the, the category total anymore. So I'll just overwrite it with the percentage now. So... Let's see. Percentage... And then I'm going to leave the variable name to make it explicit what I'm doing here. Um, but I can, let's see, cats key and then overwrite it with, um, yeah, with the percent. All right. Why is this? Okay. That should be correct. Value. And this, yeah, this will be a number already. It has to be. I think that's correct. And now I have the percentage. So I can check in the loop, basically. Let me first make sure that this doesn't error somewhere. Okay. So now I can check in the loop. Let's see. Basically, I need to... How am I going to do this? Because basically, I need to take... As the percentages go down, I need to check the categories. And if any category matches that percentage mark, then I need to print them out. Let me print out the cats now that they're percentages and not just the numbers. Hmm. I wonder why it didn't print. There we go. So food, 100%, entertainment, 0%. Yeah, that might be correct. Yeah, that's all I'm doing here. Because I don't have any withdrawals, so I didn't spend any money from entertainment. So how, how am I going to check this? I can't even think of how I might check this. So, let's see, if I, let's see, I could, so I need to check if any value in the cat's object is greater than n. So, Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to just do a loop inside of here. So, let's see. If, no, I have to do four. Um, yeah, four cat in cats. I don't need the names. So, um, or I can do, I guess, in cats.items, or no, this cats.values, right? Can I do that? I think I can. Okay. So, for val and cats.values, I need to check if val is greater than n, then I do, let's see, 
Um, well, I guess this, so I don't need the new line here. This needs to be first before I append the O's per category. Uh, come on. Let me open it up here. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to do here. So I need to append a space and then an O. Or wait, is it two spaces? Oh, I guess it's one space for the first one and then two spaces for each other. Oh, all right. So, oops, need to get back to my budget. So here I already have this. Or N. So before I loop through the categories, I need to already have the percentage with the pipe, which I have here. Now I can loop through the categories, and if the value is greater than N, then I'll do string plus equals, and then, oh. And then at the end of this whole thing, I need to do a new line. So I'll do string plus equals the new line character. All right, let me just try that and see where I'm at. Yes. Um, okay, I need greater than or equal to because food is 100%, but it's only coming up to 90 because it's exactly 100%. So let me print that again. Yep, and that's good. Zero though. Yeah, I guess I do zero for each category. All right, that's good. And then, um, Let's see. Yeah, so that's equals. Okay, well, I can add in the extra space if I need it later. Then what goes at the bottom? It's basically just dashes that covers every single space right of the pipe. Okay, so uh, let's see. So every single space, how am I going to calculate the number? I guess I could just get the, the number of categories. Um, and multiply that by the number of spaces that I need, I guess. So I have access to categories. So what if I did, do I have to do this? Um, is that correct? Let me see. Can I take the length? I guess I can take the length of the values here. I should be able to. Uh, let's do Python. Yeah, so that's fine. I can't use lowercase l, let me use uppercase l. Okay, so the length of the category. I have so many uh, single single character variable names here. Um, so this is working and then 
I basically want to figure out the dashes here based off the length. So I'm going to do string plus equals um, and then do this. It will end in a new line, but I need to figure out the number of dashes. So I basically need to take the length and then multiply it by uh, this character. So let's see if that works. Yes, but this character, okay, this is length times two. Ah, this isn't going to work exactly, but oh well, it's a start. Okay. Yes, that's better. And now I need to indent by four spaces. Can I? Let's see if that works. Yeah, that works. All right. Um, it's not exactly right, but it's pretty close. Because actually the second line, I probably need one more space there because uh, it shows that in the readme, but we'll see. Okay, and then the last piece to get this pretty much working is that I need to vertically print. That doesn't want to load for some reason, but I can uh, vertically print the names of the categories here. So I need to, yeah, basically append them onto the end here. I really want to see other people's solutions for this. So what should I do? I could do a while loop and then just break out of it when I'm done because I need the length of the longest category name and not to stop until that. So. Um, let's see. While okay, I'm gonna put a break statement in here. Okay, and then when am I going to? Or how am I going to loop through the names? So I need to Man, it's almost it's almost ten AM. I have to get started with work pretty soon. I really want to get this last piece done. I didn't realize it would take this long. I'm just kind of brute forcing all this. Okay, so while true, I need to get the category names and add on character by character. Mm, I wonder, do I need to keep track of the index? As I'm in the loop, and that way I could get the index off of the names maybe? Uh, these problems are from Free Code Camp, so I'll just post the challenge again. This is the one I'm working on. I already did the first two. So these are the Python projects. And there's a lot of string manipulation. So another four inside the wall loop. Do I need that? I guess I do kind of. And anyway, I can clean this up later. But, okay, four, let me do cat in. I have 
the categories object. So I really only need the keys, right? Keys. And then let me just call it key so I'm not confusing myself. So I'll have the keys and then here I need, I might just put a try catch with the break. So, cause I'm gonna run out of um, indexes, I guess. Um, let's see, or it'll be a key error. So, eh, plus equals one every iteration through the loop. So, for key in cats.keys. Yeah, because this will add on each time. And then, I'm going to try this. Put a try except here. Just a bare except to break out of the loop. All right, and then do everything else in here. Okay. And while true, yeah, if you look on my YouTube channel, I uploaded the videos of me working through the other two challenges. So I don't think I got quite as stuck as I'm, I've gotten on this one though. Um, four keys and cats out keys pass. Yeah, so here I need to get the first, oops, where is it? The, just the first character or each cat, character. Uh, yeah, each cat, character one by one there. Oh wait, there's two extra, I didn't see this, there's two extra dashes on the end. So let's see. See if there's a formula for three, there's three categories, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So maybe I can times it by three plus one. Let me try that. Figuring out more issues as I go. So times it by three, and then plus one. And that should give me the right dashes. Let me try running this real quick. So, Python. Hmm. Oh, it's not breaking out. Oops. Okay, well, the dashes are working now, so that's good. Um, but it's never breaking. Oh, because I'm not even doing anything that would cause an exception. So I need something that would cause an exception when it runs out of keys, I guess. So let's see. Um, I only have a few minutes left. All right. I want to look up or I have the key. I want to basically get the first or whatever the index value that character and I want to add it on to so I'm going to have to add it on to my main string string each time through the loop. But I'm going to need a temporary string for just that row as well. So should I do it here? Yeah. Temp string equals an empty string. And then let's see. And then I want to at the end I want to do the regular string 
plus equals temp string and then plus new line so oh that's a variable so temp string is a variable okay and but in here I need to add on to this temporary string so this should be one a single character which is what I want so let me try to temp string I don't even know if I need a temp string but it's there and then I need to add spaces too but we'll just leave it like that for now yes it's working I just have no spaces and no left padding so I would want to pad this by five and yep and then I need to pad it in between and I need one more space here and I need padding in between the letters here Whew, this has been a long project well, I guess it's only two hours total if you include all the streaming time maybe it's been two and a half hours something like that but it's basically basically needs the final touches now so I have to get to work but just to kind of recap let me go to the readme here so I did all of these things right I created a category class with a bunch of different methods and uh, class variables and then a wrapper function to print um, this information out for each category and then this is what I mostly worked on in the stream today was this other function where I calculate how much money I spent um, versus the total spending and then it needs some cleanup like I need to you know properly space things out change a few things but overall this is pretty much done it's pretty good how it is now so if you want to see my solution if you have any recommendations now, I haven't done any cleanup yet but if you have any recommendations to make this better then you know there's my solution and I am going to try to fix this you know and make all the tests pass because I'm guessing if I run this yeah I'm still getting two failures so I still need to yeah this is what it's printing out so of course it's failing but that's fine I got pretty close today and oh yeah it does for long descriptions it is pushing so I do need to fix all of my string printing actually in the class and the function so all right so uh, thanks for watching thanks for chatting and hopefully I will see you next week with the next Python project take care everybody <laughs>